My name is Deron Chavis, and you're now here at Black Space Matters. I'm with Rob Jones, Executive Director of Groundwork RVA. And today we're going to be talking about the Resiliency Garden yes, and his work in community. Cool. So, um, Rob, tell me a little bit about yourself. I, I've been around for a minute. I come out of a history of activism. I am a black boomer. Mm. Now, it's funny. See, I look like this, right. um, but that's because my mama was white. There you go. My daddy black, mm -hmm. but they were both real progressive folk. And fast forward, uh, college activist. This was during the time of the Free South Africa movement. We were part of that movement for divestment, right? Because for me, there was a really clear connection between what was happening in South Africa and minority rule there and the history and legacy of the civil rights movement and the struggle of black folk in this country to be able to vote and to have power and to have agency in our own lives. I actually, one of the, the highlights of my own personal life is that I got to meet Nelson Mandela. We were part of the campaign to get him free. And when he came out and did his world tour, he comes out before the show. He comes to the back and he shakes every single one of our hands and he looks us in the eye and he says, I see you. And I know that I couldn't do what I'm doing if you weren't doing what you're doing. Thank you. Fast forward, um, had, had gotten to a place in my life where I was doing consulting um, and uh, Groundwork was looking for a new ED. I'm like, yeah, because here is an opportunity that combines for me personally, mm -hmm. agency mm -hmm. for black folk, mm -hmm. young people being able to step into their own and, and create in the environmental and, and the, the green world spaces that work for them and that make our communities more livable. Right. You know, that, that's what brings me to where I sit and stand today. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what Groundworks RVA does and what you feel uh, is of import in engaging with youth around these topics of, of the environment and ecology. It's important to know that Groundwork is, is not a single entity, right? We are a national network. There's 20 of us around the country. This is our seventh year. Um, I am the first ED of color, um, working with a board chair of color, Nathan Burrell. The mission of Groundwork RVA is to cultivate the next generation of urban conservationists. It has always meant a strong partnership with Richmond Public Schools, mm -hmm. providing voice and opportunity, skills-based for black and brown folks to understand and reconnect to the natural world. So we've got a really strong partnership with um, Department of Parks, right? Recreation community facilities, making sure that um, we're doing trail work and other kinds of things like that, creating access for our communities and spaces that sometimes we don't necessarily feel welcome in. So mm -hmm. a project we did um, just before I got here was the pathway at the Manchester climbing wall, mm -hmm. right? Now, mm -hmm. on the one hand, right, climbing, black people don't climb, but mm -hmm. that's the point, right? right, right? right. Often when black people show up mm -hmm. in those spaces, like, well, what you doing, right? right. And right. so, that notion of agency, that notion of we do belong, we know how to be. And one of the things that, that I'm taking as my personal mission is to push our young folk farther up the food chain because it's real easy to look and say, oh yeah, the black and brown kids, we'll get them to do the maintenance work. Right, right. And nothing wrong with that, right? right? It's right, a skill right, right. and we do. But also, how do we understand the design? How do we get farther up? How do we do installation? How do we begin to learn more about plant cultivation and this and that and the other? Which is why when I got tapped to be the ED at Groundwork, one of the first things I did was go find you right. to make sure that that learning was coming from within the community. Groundwork, RVA, the young people that participated in that program played an instrumental role in the development of this space. Yes, they did. You want to talk a little bit about what their role was? So we went in and we made the beds and, you know, came out, looked at the map, tried to figure out where things needed to go, came, cut all the lumber, uh, silly genius, put all the amazing art 
mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we came out and put them together, put them in space. A lot of the work that we do is, is not always visible. Mm -hmm. right. But our young folk who are doing work across the city mm -hmm. come by here all the time. Mm -hmm. And to be known as part of this thing, which has you know, gotten such acclaim, mm -hmm. has really made that a come up moment for yeah. them, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, no, no, this thing that everybody's talking about, I did that. Right. When you look here, I mean, this is the, I mean, this is a, this is a parking lot, man. Right. This, ain't, this ain't, you know, some green, right? right? You can grow food anywhere. So don't tell me, right? Oh, well, I live here, I live there, I ain't got, no, you can grow food anywhere. And this is the demonstration. Right. That notion of resiliency, self-sufficiency, the ability, right? They all know that all they got in their communities is chips and soda, right? right. They got that part. Right. Right. But what do you, how do you shift that, mm -hmm. right? Is it, is another, you know, is a different oh, question. For you, as uh, a mentor, leader, you know, director of an organization that incubates black youth. What does the term black space matters mean to you? Thank God, right, we've seen a racial reckoning this summer and the notion of black lives matters is something that's, that's becoming much, much more accessible. Mm -hmm. And if you had asked me a year ago, mm -hmm. whether the, the spring and summer of 2020 were when we were going to get to systemic racist questions in this country, right. I would have slapped you in your head and said, you are out of your mind, right. right? In the middle of this Trump nonsense, in the middle of there. No, no, this is not where we get to systemic. Right, 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 right. But here we are. Right, here we are. Mm -hmm. So black space matters for me is, is really that notion of agency and that notion of self-determination mm -hmm. and that if we had gotten our 20 acres and a mule mm. at the end of the Civil War, mm. we wouldn't be having these conversations. Yeah, no, of course, it'd be a whole right? Mm -hmm. We know how to work. We've right. been working all our damn lives, most of it for free, right? If you look at our history in this country, right. so the other piece, right? And this is, this is where you get to George Floyd, right? If you just take your foot off my neck, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Let me have space that matters. Right. Let me be an agent right. for my own. Mm -hmm. If your foot is consistently on my neck mm -hmm. and on my young folks' neck, mm -hmm. and that's what they see, and they don't have consistent images and examples of agency and folks who can make and do and be who they want to be, that's what we're working towards. That's what you're working towards, we're working towards. And, and for us in the, in the green movement, we're having the same reckoning. And, and to get there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm, black space has to matter because right. we ain't had it. We ain't had it. I, I appreciate the work that you do with connecting uh, our young people to being agents of change and transformation yeah. in their own communities, right? Because something flips and something switches when we did it for our own community. That's exactly right. Versus somebody coming in mm -hmm. and uh, you know doing the thing, and then we be the, we're the beneficiaries of a mm -hmm. of a thing. Their ability to be out in space during this period mm -hmm. in spaces that you've created in parks mm -hmm. has made a huge difference right. in their mental health. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and when you look at, at that trauma, and you look at that level of, of you know mental health impact, and the sort of systemic depression in so many parts of our community, mm -hmm. we don't get respite. It's constant, right. right? So part of what our young folks are are doing is is modeling for themselves, but also for their families and their communities. Mm -hmm. Ooh, guess what? You know this outside thing. It ain't bad. Right. It's kind of it's kind of cool. And right. plus, wait, food? Right. Right. Come on now. What's on the horizon for 2021 for you, groundwork and, and the work period in general? This is this is the year that we break out. We have had sort of a consistent program on our on our workforce side. We've had a core of three young folk who we have brought forward to be able to become leaders and they are ready. So this is the year that we build cohort. This is the year where more young folks come. We use our existing projects and partnerships with you, with other folk, to get more 
young people the opportunity A, to be outside, B, to be trained, and C, to get paid. Mm. We're looking at a garden that you started with, with Asia, my Asia Good mm. in Hillside. She's an extraordinary young woman, had a, a strong vision, Amazing just got idea. a full ride to Stanford. Mm. And we want to be the wind under her wings to provide that community with programmed growing space that combines agency for young folk, the ability to grow food and place-based um, you know, learning and potentially earning. Nice. Being partners with Happily Natural and, and seeing this come to fruition has just been a, a, real, a real joy and um, it's made a huge difference in the lives of our young folks. So thank you. This has been Black Space Matters. I'm your host, Deron Chavis. Tune in next week as we bring you some of the most prolific resiliency and ecological activists from the African community here in the Richmond region.